So the next type of integral I want to spend a little bit time on is what gets called a line integral, a path integral, and a contour integral. To me, at the end of the day, these three are the same thing. Because conceptually, we're taking a function and adding up pieces of the function along some path or curve. Why do we use the different words? Typically, not always, line integral gets used when what I'm adding is a scalar function. Path integral often gets used when I'm doing the projection of a vector function onto the path. And the contour integral is typically used when I'm using complex functions. But I mean, that's not a perfect one-to-one. -one. Um, it's just a general guide. But you'll see that at the end of the day, from a sort of idea of adding small pieces, those are all basically the same. And so the language does get somewhat interchangeable. And you'll see people use them somewhat interchangeably. Now, I'm going to look at, at kind of two things uh, to begin with in some detail. So let's first consider the following case. And I have to admit, going in, there's a minor issue with these, only in the sense that I realized afterwards I picked all my examples for y equals x squared to go from x equals 0 to 1. And of course, when y equals x squared from 0 to 1, y also goes from 0 to 1. <laughs> um, so you don't see the obvious difference in like y having a different endpoint than x. But you know, it's still, the main points are still good. Now, the first thing you've learned about this, just to beat a dead horse, was you're used to doing the area under the curve. And I'm going to put it up here just to distinguish it from the line integral. That's simply the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx, which in this case is the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx, which is 1 third. And that's adding up little pieces of area as we go along. But what a line integral does is something fundamentally different. We want to sum the function along the curve. Right here we were summing the function, the va so this, keep in mind, is we're summing the value of the function f of x times the little dx's to get little mini areas. That's what we're summing. Okay? Here what we're doing is basically taking little pieces of the curve, and this is the key, so they're little pieces ds. They're along the curve. We're going to now take, let's redraw our curve. We're going to take a little piece of the curve and take that and multiply it by the function at that spot on the curve and then sum this up. And that's a fundamentally different idea. And one of the biggest differences here, the function and, and quote, the curve right, are the same thing. That y equals x squared is the function we were summing over. Here, we have two separate things. We're going to have a function that describes the curve, and we're going to have the function that we're adding up. And they're two different objects. So let's look at that. The first step in this is to figure out how we get ds. Well, what was the one thing we said geometrically is a, a constant? Right, what's the invariant that we use when we look at geometric objects? We, we, we used it briefly in our little lecture on change of variables. The length, but more importantly, the length what? The real invariant is ds squared, oh, yeah, yeah. right? Is the magnitude of it, right? So ds squared is what? If I want to use Cartesian coordinates. Uh, dy squared plus dx squared. 
Exactly. And since addition commutes, I can write it the other way. So ds, the thing we're going to integrate over, is fundamentally this. And this is where there's a couple of ways you can go about it. You want to, at this point, pick a parameterization for your curve. You have some curve in space that's basically f of y, x, y equals a constant if we're doing 2D. Now, for a lot of simple curves, you can parameterize it this way. So basically, we're picking x as our parameterization. If I wanted to be really nasty in detail, I would say I'm going to pick a parameter t, and for my curve, y equals t squared and x equals t. That would be a more detailed parameterization, and I could do it that way. And for a really complicated curve, sometimes you need to actually break it down explicitly. But a line by definition is 1D, so all I need is one parameter, one variable to define it. All right? And the parameter tells me how to step along it and tells me at each point as I step what's x and what's y. And if you're really stuck at times, it is useful to think of this in a very physical way, that your curve is a trajectory. And t is literally time. And you define a tra tra trajectory as x of t and y of t. And now the tangent vectors to the trajectory are the velocities. And it really gives you a useful way to thinking about it. So you'll see in a lot of math and, and in the Mathematica handbook, Peter Taborik often talks about this, where we talk about the parameterization in terms of a particle moving. And it really helps, I think, when you're doing three-dimensional ones. Because in three-dimensional space, it's sometimes hard to picture, you know, what do you want to do with y, x, and z? And it's easiest to just go, OK, let's take a parameter t and write x, y, and z of a function of t to give me that curve. Um, and it makes it clear you have a curve and not a surface. But in this case, we'll stick with um, the y equals x squared. So x is our parameter. So we literally will factor out a dx because that's what we want to use. And I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you to see that you'd get basically the same thing if what you want to do is write everything in terms of a dt and parameterize this in terms of t. But now we know what ds is. We also know what our curve is. It's y equals x squared. So we know our dy dx is 2x. So now we can take any function f of x, y, and sum it along that curve. And it, sort of geometrically and pictorially, we have x, y. And in the x, y plane, we have y equals x squared. We have some generic function of x, y <coughs> that's defined everywhere. But we want to pull out its values along that curve and sum it up. So we might do this for the function 2x, y. And so what would this look like? We put this together with ds. And we're going to be doing the integral from the point 0, 0 to the point 1, 1 of the function f of x, y, ds, which will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x, y, the square root of 1 plus 4x squared dx. So this is our ds. This is our f of x, y that we're summing. We now need to turn the y into x squared. And so we end up doing this integral. And we put it in Mathematica and we get an answer. And you can see right away that this is going to be something very different from that integral of x squared dx. That was the function. I just assigned that as the problem. That's the function in this case I want to integrate. And that could have been anything. Could have been, you know, x squared plus 7y over 2z sine, well, no, z, sorry, over 2x sine of xy. Okay. Any questions on that? I want to highlight very quickly. The difference between that and something that's conceptually the same, but now we're going to integrate the function 
which is a vector function projected onto the curve. Any immediate guess why that might be a little bit different to begin with? What's, what's the little piece I want to use now? If I'm going to project onto the curve, instead of ds, what do I need to use? Well, I need the tangent to the curve. I need the ds as a vector, also known as dr, also known as dx. So the tangent differential, for lack of a better word. And that's a little easier to write. In Cartesian coordinates, what is dr? Right? If I'm in x, y, and I have some random little dr somewhere, how would I write dr? So what's the simplest way to write a vector? How would I write, let me ask you this, how would I write the vector v? So vx i hat plus vy j hat, perhaps? Is that what you're saying? OK, good. So how do I write the vector dr? dx i hat plus vy j. Perfect. Right? We use our unit vectors. Our unit vectors give us the components, and the drs in the x direction is just by definition dx, and the dr in the y direction is by definition dy. And this is why we spent so much time, I hope, really talking about fundamental representations of vectors in terms of components and basis vectors and so on. Um, obviously, we could even use bras and cats here. But in this case, the i-hat, j-hat notation is better when we're doing this sort of stuff. Um, and you really, it's that, it's that simple, but it's that hard, if that makes any sense. So now let's imagine some vector function, and again, what does it mean to have a vector function? It means I have some fx of xy i hat plus f sub y of xy j hat. I'm going to just make one up. We're going to go 2xy i hat plus 3y squared j hat. And the nice thing is, by using component notation, the projection is easy. Right? It's 2xy dx plus 3y squared dy. Now, there might be some where the projection is not so easy, and you might have to, and this is why we're also going to learn our vector identities, and you might turn this into a different type of integral. But fundamentally, if you're going to have to do it by hand, that's what you do. Um, and we need, again, our parameterization of our curve. Because what we're going to now do is the integral from point A to point B is some integral that we have to figure out what the limits are of that. Now, we want it along the curve given by y equals x squared. So again, that's one parameterization we can use. And if we use that, we know that dy equals 2x dx. Now, it turns out this is kind of a fun case. I can also parameterize with y as my parameterization variable. So this integral I can just do, 3y squared dy. There's no issues with it. This one, I just have to plug in y equals x squared. So one way I could do this is the integral from 0 to 1 of 2, now y equals x squared, so 2x cubed dx, plus the integral from 0 to 1, because again, y equals 1 at x equals 1 for this curve, of 3y squared dy. And if I do that, OK, I'm going to get x to the fourth over 2 from 0 to 1, plus y cubed from 0 to 1, which is 1 and a half. Notice, if I use my other parameterization, 
and put everything in terms of x, then what do I get over here? Well, y squared is x to the fourth. dy is 2x dx. So I have 6x to the fifth dx. This one is still the same. That's my 1 half. And this is now x to the sixth from 0 to 1. And notice the relationship, as it must be, this is in the x sense, this is in the y sense, but they're the same expression. If I plug y equals x squared into here, I get x to the sixth. So it had to work. This is different. And the reason I say this, we learn, what do we learn? What do you remember from physics about path integrals that we're going to come back to? What's an important thing about path integrals? Because path integrals are what in physics? What one major important physics idea from mechanics is a path integral? Perfect. Work. And does work depend on the path you take? Depends. It depends. Conservative forces, no, but in general, yes. So the path you take matters. But notice the parameterization of the path cannot matter. So what I did here was I used two different parameterizations of the path, and I got the same answer. So that can't matter, but the path might matter. So keep in mind that with the projection onto a path and summing, the path might matter, but not the parameterization. So here, I used two different parameterizations and got the same answer, not two different paths. And that's a key idea. But again, here I projected the other place I didn't have to because it was a scalar. But I hope you see the basic structure of the function and the path, right? The function and the path. And figuring out your limits of integration based on the parameterization of the path. And again, this example isn't as dramatic as it could be because I went from 0 to 1 for y equals x squared. So both x and y go from 0 to 1. But the basic idea is there. Any questions? You just came up with dfxy as a random Yeah, as an example, just so I could actually do something. Yeah, that could be any f of xy. <laughs> Right. So you might be given f of x, y in this fashion of literally f of x, y equals a constant, right, which is the, um, you know, what's that called? The implicit form. But you might be given it the way I did, where y equals x squared. 